So I got one more story. I want to bring some science into this. Let's get I it. I found one that was crazy, kind of blew my mind, and also has already led to more research. So this is from UCL News. That's University College London News. Human brain cells in a dish learn to play Pong. A team of researchers at UCL put a culture of brain cells on a microelectrode array and got the brain cells to play a version of Pong. So a microelectrode array was some... Sh- I had to look that up. I'm not a scientist. So I'm going to do my best to synthesize this. But it just looks like a little chip almost with little pokers sticking out. And I guess they put a culture... Of, let's see, we'll take it straight out of the article. In the experiment outlined in Neuron, researchers took 800,000 brain cells from both embryonic mice and human brain cells derived from stem cells. They then grew them on top of microelectrode arrays that could both stimulate and read their activity. Electrodes on the left or right of one array were then fired to tell a small number of neurons in the dish brain which side the ball was on, while distance from the paddle was indicated by the frequency of signals. Feedback from the electrodes, electrodes enabled dish brain to learn how to return the ball by making the cells act as if they themselves were the paddle, and in consequence, moving the panel in their simulated world. So, like, this is some crazy-ish to me, but uh, what it what makes it big in the you know discovery side of things is that is the fact that the dish brain these cells are acting in a meaningful manner like they there's a meaning behind what they're doing yeah so, so they're essentially playing ping pong right back and forth yeah they are playing ping pong in a petri dish the, just brain cells playing ping pong so uh just another quote although microelectrode arrays have previously been used to read the brain activity of cells or the activity of brain cells This is the first time that scientists have been able to use them to stimulate neurons in a structured way to produce responses that are realized in terms of meaningful behavior. So to quote Professor Carrie Friston, who worked on it, the beautiful and pioneering aspect of this work rests on equipping the neurons with sensations, the feedback, and crucially the ability to act on their world. So like they're acting and getting a reaction. And uh, one of the crazy things is they don't have the type of reward punishment sensors that like a human or an animal would have so you don't train them that way but they're still managing to get these synapses to fire and react in certain ways that's so crazy it's got big implications for potential you know studies and stuff so uh reading from the article again by building a living model a living model brain from basic structures in this way scientists hope to be able to experiment using real brain function rather than equivalent function equivalent models made on a computer. So you don't have to use computer models of a brain to see what these reactions are. You also don't have to do animal testing or other types of testing on brain behavior to test drugs potentially. So Friston says the unique opportunity here is to see how the drug affects neurotransmission at a synaptic at a synaptic level and crucially how this translates into behavior. So like <laughs> What the article goes into is how, you know, next time maybe they'll get it drunk and see how the ping pong game goes with drunk brain cells without, you know, just purely on that. But they could also <clears throat> translate that to treatments for things like Parkinson's disease and test things in this Petri dish. Or it could expand that way. I think what they should do, instead of getting it drunk, which is everybody's first inclination. <laughs> Wait, can we get this Petri dish drunk now? I think they should take it out for a little sunning. Maybe some grounding, a little morning breath work, possibly a Let's cold, do it. <laughs> a cold plunge, and how? then see how it does with the <laughs> pong. Let's see what happens even after that. Sharp. Don't sound so bad that me. was one thing. It did get more efficient as it went along in the article. It gets better at making the pong game happen too. So there's like there's all these different weird signs, Let's, and this is a year old. This same research team came out with more stuff. They built like. Almost the equivalent of a chip, and they're creating AI using these, uh, you know, these brain dish uh, chip things that they're creating. But it was so complicated that I just wanted to take my time and actually try to read it and see if I'm getting any of that right when I say it. Because it sounds like that to me, but I'm not a scientist. I don't know neurons like that. And uh, it just sounded crazy. But essentially, these things were recognizing auditory language was one of the things they mentioned. They could recognize different voices. I was like, what is, how do they know Whoa. it's recognizing things? What is going on? So 
I got to read the study on that one and see if I can kind of make heads or tails of any of it or find something. This wasn't on The Onion, right? No, UCL, bro, University College London. And Neuron is a major publication. And I forget the other one was like a, I think it was a nature journal. So it was real academic journals producing this, which is why it got my attention. Like, what? The TFP, the fans' perspective.